Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to import the media we want to use. And that's quite simple. There's various ways of doing that in uh, Sony Vegas Pro. I'm going to use the import media uh, icon here. Just left button mouse click on there. And I've already stuck uh, the video I want to use into here. Obviously, you'd navigate to where it is on your system and pick out the one you want to use. Simply press open. That brings it into the media bin here. And then if I left button mouse click and keep the mouse depressed, drag it across and then release, uh, it adds the video to the timeline. But it comes up with a warning saying, do you want to match to this uh, media? And we always want to do that. You want to match uh, the import. Uh, and that's basically what it's going to use to uh, render it out at the end. So you want to keep them the same. That uh, saves any conflict between frame rates, etc. So we'll say yes to that. And as you can see, this clip, about five minutes long and I'm just going to do a very small bit just to show you because you can use the uh, technique wherever you like then so let me just scrub back and forwards quickly just to the area I wanted to get to and it was just after we come over the lamps and then we've got this little uh, sorry it's, it's quite a big boat actually uh, being worked on here now to trim the video quickly again there's various ways of doing that in uh, Sony but if I hover over the end here you get the double arrows and a, a rectangle on the right hand side if I left button mouse click keep the mouse depressed and just drag it along and then release it when I get it to the point I want which I'd, I'd marked clearly uh, here um, then you're, that just trims it there straight away job done now move along to the exit point or the final point and just come over the village just a wee bit just about there I think that's going to be more than adequate uh, up to the other end of the timeline left button mouse click again drag it back along and that's us all trimmed down to a nice bit of video let's put this back at the start over here so left button mouse click hold on to it and drag it across and then go back to the start of the video and we're ready to play then and as you can see, it's just a normal flight over the top of a small harbour and then go up over the fish factory and then on into the village. So, and all looking fine. But let me just stop that for a second. Now, uh, let's take this timeline, um, so this uh, media clip, sorry, so that it fills our timeline. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. You can left button mouse click down here, and drag it along, or if you just uh, hover over the video, uh, or anywhere around the timeline and then use your scroll key on your mouse you can just expand it or reduce it down entirely up to you so and then we just get little previews of what's at that part of the video uh, another thing I'd suggest we do is we match the actual size of the preview which is this written here to the actual display size and at the moment it's at its default one um, so it's incorrect and the preview size is set up here so we can choose how we want to display it and I've just happened to have chosen half uh, so it's coming out 640 360 so I don't have any music or anything on here at the moment so I don't actually need uh, this uh, master control for the audio so I can turn that off and that gives us a bit more screen space and screen space is vital when you're video editing oh, I find it is anyway so uh, I need to make this up so these two sizes match so if I left button mouse click over here when it turns into the double headed arrow and just drag it along and then I need to do it at the bottom as well left button mouse click and drag it down you can see the preview uh, the display sorry is getting larger when I come out to about the right size, so we're getting up to sort of 360, we just need to add a little bit more here. So we need to get that up to 640, which is not far off. And once you've done this, you can just set it. So it's um, you don't have to do this every time by any means. There we go. And if you notice, once we actually match the preview size, this turns to black and it was white before. So we know that's exactly right. Now the image looks clearer up here because we're matching it pixel for pixel. If there's any difference in these sizes, you've got a conflict over the pixels and you can wind up with the uh, image looking soft or um, or just not clear. Um, it can it can look quite, quite poor. So you, you might think you've got a bad bit of video and actually you could have a perfectly fine bit of video. So you need to match these up. It's quite important. OK, so we've had a quick look. We've selected the area we want to work on. There's a couple of things I'm going to do um, uh, to make it look miniaturized. Uh, I always think in miniature things 
tend to move very fast uh, and if you notice if I scrub back and forwards you've got these people walking along here and then you've got some people talking here and if I do it at normal speed it just looks like you know everything's happening normally you're it's a big town um, that we're flying over to make it miniature if I speed it up a bit it will give the illusion that it's sort of uh, it's small it just does draw your eye that it's small if it's if it's speeded up well that's my interpretation of it anyway there's a couple of ways of speeding up the video uh, well there's quite a few actually in Sony Vegas but I'm going to go for the real simple way and that's just literally hover over the end of the timeline of the media clip you're selecting hold down your control key and then underneath instead of the double headed arrows and the little rectangle you now get a wiggly line underneath and that means you you can adjust the time so if you wanted slow motion you left button mouse click and drag it this way and that will make it slow motion but if you want to speed it up we simply go the other way and as you can see you're compressing the timeline down now so we could go right the way down to there well, I'll take it to about there um, 10 seconds is going to be a good enough clip I think for it and again we can just zoom that back up as I showed you with the scroll wheel. If I go back to the beginning now and then press play, you notice it's going a lot faster. There we go. So it's compressed. Um, I don't know what it was originally, about getting on for 30 seconds, 25 seconds, I think, something like that, down to 10 seconds. So it's basically speeded up the video. Now we need to get to the bit where I actually give the illusion of a macro lens because if we were flying over a model village, a small village, uh, the camera you'd use would probably have a macro lens, a close-up lens. When you use that, you get a very limited depth of field, so you get a lot of uh, area out of focus, and that's what creates the, the miniature illusion uh, when we do it uh, from a quad like this. So what I need to do is come into... Uh, it's to make a mask where I can have uh, the out of focus bit where I want it and have control of it throughout the video. So the way I'm going to do that is left button mouse click on the crop tool here. And in Sony Vegas Pro, you get a mask underneath the crop tool. So the position one is the crop tool, as you can see there. If I left button mouse click on ma a mask, that goes and it's ready to actually... Uh, make a mask for us or we choose how we want to make a mask there's lots of tools down here that you can use but I'm going to go for a really simple one I'm just going to use the rectangle uh, mask creation tool here and just literally come over the bit I want so uh, I'm going to come outside the actual picture box of the actual uh, video and come through and just make sure I've got the boat in shot and then come right over to the other side as you can clearly see now, the difference here is this is the preview of what the mask is going to do. And this is actually showing us where the physical mask is. And then it's given a grayed out area or grayed down area to show us what the effect of the mask is going to be. But here's the final output here. So if we left it like this, all we'd have is a narrow strip like this of the film to play through. So I could just quickly go back and forwards there. There we go. You're just going to li literally, that's all you're going to have. But... I'm using this mask to apply a filter. So that's what I'm going to do next. So we've picked the mask. I'm going to come back to this point here because this is where we've actually, uh, the area we've actually picked that we were going to start on. And I want it to affect, uh, be applied to the effects that I'm going to put on where this mask is. So I want that to be yes. And then I want to pick an effect that I want to use. So I come into this area here and it's a, the, uh, the plugin I'm going to use. Left button mouse click on here. You get a whole array of them and you could use any of these with the mask. Um, and there's loads more actually you could keep adding to. Uh, and there's various ways of making an out of focus look. I'm just going to use the Gaussian or Gaussian blur. Click OK. And then as you can see, we've got a nice fuzzy area here. A little bit too much I would say so I'm going to drop these figures down and to do that it's just like normal editing just uh, left button mouse click and swipe through whatever figure you want to change I'm going to change these last three and I'm going to put them at 200 
and I would suggest you keep these two the same. It's up to you. you. You might find with a technique, once you start doing things yourself, you might like the fact that it's drawing it in a vertical range or a horizontal range. Uh, you choose whatever you want. It's going to be your video at the end of the day. So this is just my idea of doing it. So I think 200 works or it might be a bit strong. We can always come back and alter this. And this is the nice thing about using masks and using filters. We can they're changing throughout the whole process. So when we find we want anything different, we just come back and change it. We don't have to go through the whole process again, which is a really good system, I think. So uh, first thing you probably notice is we haven't actually got the mask where we want it. Well, we have got the mask where we want it, but what it's done is it's applied the effect of that blur where the mask is. And what I want it to do is to apply the effect of the mask outside where the mask, where the actual mask is. So let's go, instead of going on the mode of the path, which is basically the mask, instead of being positive, I'm gonna make it negative. So now we have the blurring effect of the filter outside the area of the mask. We can disable the mask as well. So if we wanted to do some tests and things and we just wanted it turned off, this is how we would turn it off. But we're actually going to use it as a negative and go from there. Now, that doesn't look very miniature at the moment because we've got a very sharp edge here. Um, and that's just not going to work. Uh, let me just go show you that's just really not it just doesn't look right to me come back on uh, to the actual mask itself and what we need to do here is add a feather uh, not a physical feather it's uh, an actual change uh, of uh, being a hundred percent mask here and then zero here so there's no mask effect here and there's a hundred percent of the mask being used here so you can see there's a definite one pixel line right the way through there what i want to do is change that so there's it goes from uh, zero to 100 but it does, does it gradually over here and there's a really easy way of doing that simply come over to feather here i'm going to use uh, out as a feather and basically that goes from the inside um, from the, the line of the, the mask and that will radiate outwards in all four directions and then I go down to the next one which is feather and this is how much feathering we're going to have you can type in the number or click up and down here or if you left button mouse click here you've got a little slider and you can just slide it along and you can just choose whatever you want as your amount of uh, feather you want to use I think there's probably not too bad and again, depending on the resolution, the size of this area and everything else will we'll, we'll denote what you want to see. And also it's going to be on your footage. So, And what I might do actually is just narrow that end a little bit more. Lovely thing about the masks is you can alter them loads of different ways. I'm just doing the very basic one here. But if you watch on here as I'm doing it, you can see I'm just bringing that because we've got a softened edge there, I'm just going to bring it in a little bit tighter onto the boat. And though on here it's given me a crisp line, as you can see, the sort of greyed out area is softened here, but we can definitely see the effect there. And I think you start to see that this is actually becoming a miniature now. Uh, to me it is anyway. Now, the reason this put this here uh, rather than anywhere else and it's where I select it on the timeline is this button here locks it on the timeline so if I move the timeline to here it moves it here and here because that's locked if I take that lock off and then move somewhere else on the timeline you see the picture here is totally different to the picture here what you have to watch is when you've done the mask the way I've done it if I come back to here the original point there is no mask here so there's absolutely nothing there because the mask doesn't come into work until it's here let's come back to there again and you can see all we've got is the effect of the filter we haven't actually got the mask if i come to here you'll see we've got the mask effect so what i want to do is just literally delete this little diamond which is the marker point on here that there's a change i simply right button mouse click on there and then press delete and that gets rid of it now, wherever I go on the timeline, there's the filter the way I want it to work. What I'm going to do is left button mouse click here, 
and just drag this right the way back to the beginning. So that means the whole line here has the effect of the mask and the effect of the filter on it as well. We can now close that dialog down and then we can come back through here and then you'll see the effect of it. As you can see, that's working okay. People are looking really small. The fish factory is looking pretty small as well. And as we come over it and then we zoom back out, it's still keeping the village. It looks like a miniature village to me. Um, again, <laughs> this is a technique that's entirely up to you. Uh, what I'll do is I'll render that out, put that at the very end. Um, this is my first tutorial. It's my first time of having to go at this. Um, if you like it, please thumbs up. Give me some comments. Give me some feedback. Uh, if I get uh, the feedback that sort of making me think that I might do a few more of these and, and show you what I do with the other effects I use in uh, Sony, then I will. I can also do it in Sony Studio as well, uh, which is the, um, you know, uh, the, the cheaper package basically and doesn't have some of the facilities that the pro does uh, but both of them you can do everything in you just have to approach it in a different manner so let me get this rendered out finish off the video and hope you enjoyed it cheers for now mm -hmm.